This video is part of the social psychology series made by me, covering the topics of person perception. First of all, what is social cognition? It is where cognitive processes and structures are affected by social context and it influences social behavior. Why do we need to study person perception? Well, we might want to know things like the accuracy of snap judgments in which individuals judge extroversion from photos when it is only shown at 50 ms or 50 milliseconds and apparently there's a greater than 0.6 correlation in that rule 2014 stated that sexuality judgments could be deduced accurately after seeing 40 ms photos and that thinking about it individuals become less accurate leadership according to atonicus and dalgus in 2009 found that children were just as accurate as adults in judging the competency, intelligence and leadership of individuals. They found that Swiss children favoured Obama before they even knew who he was, as in just by looking at a picture. Studying person perception can also allow individuals to know the unconscious intentions which may exist. Fisher et al. in 2006 found that men liked beauty and avoided women who were smarter and more ambitious than they were. Women, on the other hand, like men who were more smarter and ambitious than they were. Also, along the lines of the unconscious, unconscious intentions, Implicit personality theories are personal ways of categorizing people and are used to guide judgments and consist of beliefs about relationships between traits and behaviors. These allow us to assess and to, well, perceive other people, other people's personalities. Zebrowitz et al. in 2005 found that people with babyish faces were believed to be more trustworthy but were rated low on other scales which were seen as jobs that were more for adults like banking. Ash in 1946 discovered that individuals form impressions similar to perceiving physical properties of objects like a gestalt, a configurable holistic system made of a separate components. This includes central traits which are traits that have disproportionate influences on configuration of final impressions, peripheral traits which are traits that have insignificant influence of configuration of the final impression and we must also consider primacy versus recency in which the order of presentation effects had a disproportionate influence in the impression such as for example using good words to describe an individual in the beginning despite having bad descriptors of the individual in the middle or using good words at the end so anyway these all come into play in our person perception through cognitive schemas which are organized expectations or sets about objects, events and people and these help us to interpret new information. Scripts are schemas for certain contexts or situations. Heuristic strategy is a shortcut, a fast complex judgment that relies on these very schemas to fill in the gaps. Since we rely on these heuristics, our schemas can be rather inaccurate and we notice information even if ambiguous that is consistent with our own expectations and thus confirmation bias can influence us since we overlook information that is not consistent with our schema and confirm our own theory of others. As a result, this leads to stereotypes in which widely held beliefs that people in which are widely held beliefs that people have certain characteristics because of group membership in a certain something. Overgeneralization are uh, stereotypes becoming reinforced with experiences and these get stronger. In-group favoritism are when outgroups are seen as more similar to one another and look act in the same way. Individuals with in-group favoritism may maximize the differences between the in-group and outgroup and this may be based on arbitrary lines like being assigned to random groups, the roll of a dice. Sheriff in 1966 through the Robbers Cave National Park summer camp experiment found that two isolated bunkhouses filled with boys who were separated into the groups eagles and rattlers competed and were very hostile against each other. In order to stop this hostility, cooperation was required to move a stalled truck and thus through working together individuals could get over their in-group favoritism. Superordinate goals are for cooperation to occur in which a large goal is necessary for both groups to achieve such as moving a truck. Allport and Postman in 1947 stated that people who were given a picture of a white man holding a razor and who was talking to a black person, after six to seven iterations of the story, the razor changed from being in the white man's hand to the black man's hand, as the subjects were told to share what they had heard. This thus is an effect of saliency, 
stereotyping and in-group favoritism. Therefore, in conclusion, we looked at person perception, social cognition, the accuracy of snap judgments, whether through the likes of Rule or Antonicus and Thalgus's research, or through Fisher et al.'s uh, assessment on what men and women desire. We also looked at implicit personality theories, Zebrowitz on babyish faces, Ash on the personality and gestalt, such as central traits, peripheral traits, primacy versus recency. We also looked at cognitive schemas, scripts, heuristic strategies, schema inaccuracy, stereotyping, overgeneralization, in-group favoritism. We also reviewed Sheriff's 1966 Robbers Cave National Park Summer Camp Experiment, Superordinate Goals, and finally Old Port and Postman's 1947 Experiment. Thanks for watching.